Over the past year, members of the Alaska Sea Life Center's Ocean Sciences Club learned about the effects of the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill on the wildlife and people of the Gulf of Alaska. To learn more about the difficult process of cleaning up an oil spill, the club decided that it would clean up a small-scale spill of its own. Before it could respond to even a small-scale oil spill, the Ocean Sciences Club had to learn about various methods of oil spill cleanup. Using mostly household materials, the club members were able to replicate these cleanup methods in miniature for their own spill. Since spilled oil will float on the surface of the ocean, one common method to contain and divert it is the use of floating, and sometimes absorbent, booms. To replicate these booms, which may be hundreds of feet long in the real world, the club members instead used thick yarn, which could not only be used to corral the oil, but also absorb some of it in the process. Another way that oil can be pushed around the surface is through the use of jets of pressurized water, and so the club members had a squirt bottle that they could also use. A third cleanup method to take advantage of oil's buoyant properties is the use of skimmers, such as this bucket skimmer. The spinning brush of the skimmer moves the oil from the surface of the water into a collection bucket, or into a vacuum hose, allowing for the oil to be collected. To replicate the use of bucket and vacuum skimmers, the Ocean Sciences Club elected to use a combination of pipe cleaners, spoons, and eyedroppers. These instruments would allow for the collection of oil in the club's small-scale spill. Because of oil's liquid properties, absorbent materials are also commonly used in spill cleanup efforts. For the club's spill, compressed mats of plant matter, marketed specifically with oil absorption in mind, were cut into tiny, postage stamp-sized pieces to match the miniature scale of the activity. These mats can be floated on top of an affected area to soak the oil off of the water, or spread on beaches where oil has already washed ashore. One final cleanup method that the club learned about is the use of dispersants, which break up floating slicks of oil, making them less visible. But just because an oil slick is no longer visible does not mean that the oil is truly gone. Regardless, dispersants are commonly used on oil spills, so the club also decided to use one for its own miniature cleanup. The club's dispersant was kitchen dish soap, which would act as a dispersant and break up the oil, but remain safe and non-toxic. With their cleanup tools selected, the members of the Ocean Sciences Club had one more thing to do to prepare for their spill. They needed to develop a plan. Nobody wants an oil spill to happen, but it is important that every community that could potentially be affected by a spill have a plan in place in case one occurs. Without a plan, oil spill cleanup efforts can be hampered through a lack of training and organization. So each club member selected one or two cleanup methods that they would specialize in and practice cleaning up some oil with those methods. They also discussed amongst themselves how they would work together when the spill actually took place. For the spill itself, 500 milliliters of vegetable oil, colored with sugar-free cocoa powder, was poured into a large tub of water. In the opposite corner of the tub, rocks had been piled to simulate a shoreline. A 15 second count was given before the club could begin their cleanup efforts, and then they set to work. By the end of their cleanup, the club had collected roughly 400 milliliters of oil, four-fifths of the spilled amount. They had also collected nearly 500 milliliters of water, demonstrating just one of the difficulties in cleaning up oil spills. This small-scale oil spill was nothing compared to a real accident like the Exxon Valdez, but it gave the members of the Alaska Sea Life Center's Ocean Sciences Club a bit more of an understanding of the potential risks associated with oil drilling and transport.